Hello, we are back with another video and uh, today the Lord has put on our hearts to continue where we stopped just uh, last time and talk about uh, the church and uh, some of the threats to, to the church uh, is deception and lies that becomes truth among religious people and uh, one of those deceptions uh, that is especially flagrant in Swedish Christianity and in American Christianity is the spirit of Zionism and uh, Lewis has made a video about that previously which is also available on my YouTube channel and uh, you can hear that and we will continue to talk about uh, the Jews today we will talk about Zionism and we will talk about what's actually written in the in the gospel and in the New Testament about the news. Keep going. Because uh, it is the New Testament who is the uh, valid source for uh, truth about the Jews and about uh, their status in God's kingdom. And I will I have studied deeply now Romans 9, 10, 11 and for me they are extremely uh, re uh, revealing about the, how the status of the Jews are considered by God and I will quote uh, uh, basically what you can see about uh, Romans 11 it's the theme is that God's mercy on all that God's mercy is for both Jews and for Gentiles and that's quite obvious uh, and Romans 11 25 says that for I do not want you brethren to be uninformed of this mystery so that you will not be wise in your own estimation that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles have come in has come in so what, what is written here is that God has intentionally hardened the, the heart of the Jews. And what does that mean? It means that you become uh, made uh, spiritually blind for the truth, for the gospel, for the truth in the gospel and the, the message about Jesus Christ. So as difficult it may be for us to understand this, uh, is the, how God is handling the Jews and the Gentiles, the rest of us, is intended to expose all of us to his mercy. And Paul in, in Romans 11 wraps up his argument by saying that in the end there will be a room for both Jews and Gentiles in the plan of God. The details of exactly how God will do all this are aptly called by Paul as a mystery in Romans 11. So what we see uh, in the Jewish community today is a temporary stumbling. And that uh, temporary stumbling has always been a part of uh, God's plan. But the hardening is temporary, as I said, because it will only be experienced until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. That is, when all the elect of the Gentiles have come to salvation. You can read about that also in Acts 15:14. So God's plan is to temporarily harden the heart of the Jews in, in order to allow the sele a selected uh, amount of Gentiles to come into the kingdom of God and you can understand God's plan and you can see God's plan if you read the New Testament in Romans 9, 11, to 9 to 11 that this is only a way for him to show his mercy to all people and then we have this spirit of Zionism who for me is the same enemy as Jesus had uh, in the Old Testament when Jesus they were uh, the New Testament the New Testament sorry they were persecuting Jesus they were uh, finally killing him by uh, 
nailing him up on the cross, even though that was also in accordance with God's plan, but they did it. And uh, the Sanhedrin is um, also those who are behind most of the evil in this world. I have researched a lot about that. And uh, Zionism is the political branch of Talmudic Judaism. Uh, and that is what they are today. Talmudic Judaism is the greatest enemy to both Jews and Gentiles there is in the world. Because they are trying to destroy the world in order to prepare for the arrival of their messiahs. And uh, Zionism is nothing that is approved by uh, Orthodox Jews. Like Israel is not approved by Orthodox Jews either. So if you can, what I'm coming to here, if when I read the New Testament and when I read Romans, it's quite clear to me what, what, God's, what God did. He didn't do it because he was fed up with the Jews and uh, wanted to punish them. No, he hardened their hearts so that they can grow spiritually and allow the Gentiles to come uh, after, because the first uh, plan for, that God had was to use the Jews to save the rest of the world, but they were, you know, don't playing around, playing with His plan. Um, and also, the, the nation of Israel are all the uh, children of Abraham. That is, sorry. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, Abra Abraham's heritage, that they are blessed. And the Jews and the Zionism has, uh, re uh, you know, f think that this is means the Jewish people. They are the heritage of Abraham. It's not. It's, we are talking about one person here. The seed of Abraham. That is Christ Jesus, our Savior. And everyone who is a follower of Christ, Jew or Gentile, is a part of the. Ah, you can come to that. Uh, is a is a citizen of uh, the nation of Israel. So it's not exclusive to Jews. It's not exclusive to anyone, but it's exclusive to followers of Jesus Christ, believers in Christ. That's what Israel is. So the Zionist state of Israel that many Christians in the Christian Zionists claim is the Holy Land and the Jews are the selected people. These are two big lies that are keeping uh, people away from the truth in the church today. This was a very long in entry to be from me, but I think this is important because this deception uh, means that people can't reach God. They are believing in a lie. And Lewis, who has been a Christian since 1971 and have a great experience of uh, where they, this hap started, I would say. Uh, the, the country that was most infected the most was the United States of America, where Christian Zionism spread from that country to uh, the whole world and also to Sweden. And I would like to, to ask you on your view on this, Lewis. I know that Lord has put some things on your heart this time too. Please. Yes, uh, the reason that Michael and I uh, want to cover this again is because the deception here is so widespread and uh, the distraction that it presents to the Christian community is so destructive. Um, and as Michael said, it is particularly uh, infectious in America. It's almost a requirement of the American Christian that he be a Zionist. And so we want to cover this. Um, and in order to do so, it's very important to understand that when the Bible talks about this, you have to distinguish between the Jew when, when the Bible is talking about the Jews and when it's talking about the land of Palestine, Israel, there are 
statements and prophecies about the people, and then there are statements and prophecies about the land. Uh, you have to always distinguish between the two. Uh, you cannot apply the statements and prophecies about the land to the people. Now, <clears throat> one of the great lies that permeates the Christian community is the notion that the Jews of today, and by today I'm talking about the New Testament age, that the Jews are God's chosen people. This is not true. Another thing you will hear is that uh, God will bless those who bless the Jews and curse those who curse the Jews. <clears throat> so, I want to start with Genesis 12, where God first spoke to Abram and bestowed on him this wonderful blessing. And the point here that the Jews do not want you to see is that this blessing was to the man Abram. To the one man Abram. Okay? I'm going to read it to you, and I want you to listen to this with the, with the thought, is this blessing to Abram, or is it to everyone else too? Now the Lord had said to Abram, this is Genesis 12, 1, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Now for me, it is impossible to <clears throat> extend this blessing beyond the one man, Abram. I don't think that you are doing this verse justice to expand it to all the people, all of his descendants. Now he does uh, talk about the land in Genesis 26, uh, and he says then that he will give Abram's descendants these lands. Uh, but again, he must distinguish between the people and the lands. Now, <clears throat> Jesus had enormous trouble from the Jews of his day, and so did Paul. And the, the, the single greatest statement that tells you that the Jews are not God's chosen people in the New Testament age is the fact that none of the New Testament writers say that. On the contrary. Yes, on the contrary. Now look who wrote the Bible. Matthew, a Jew. Mark, a Jew. Uh, John, a Jew. Paul, a Jew. Uh, the letter to the Hebrews, a Jew. Uh, James and Jude, the brothers of the Lord, Jews. All, except for Luke, who wrote the New Testament, were Jews. None of them, anywhere, make mention of the Jews being anything special. This omission should tell you right there, if we are New Testament Christians, if our faith is based on the New Testament, which it is, then we should be able to easily see that nowhere in the New Testament does it say the Jews are God's chosen people. It talks about faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and everything flows from there. Now, as I said, Paul was involved in a, in a very intense contention with the Jews in his uh, ministry 
And likewise, the Zionists in the early church wanted to exalt the status of the Jews. And so Paul addresses this directly <clears throat> in two places. In, uh, in Galatians 3, as Michael <clears throat> said earlier, in Galatians 3.16, Paul wrote, listen to this, Now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say, and to seeds, plural, as referring to many, but rather to one, and to your seed, that is Christ. So Paul is saying here very concisely, the promise was to Abraham and to his seed Christ, not to seeds, descendants of Abraham. The promise was not to all the descendants of Abraham, as the Jews want you to believe. They want you to believe that they are God's chosen people, that they have an exalted status even in the New Testament age, and this is not biblical. Paul is the only one who even addresses, who even brings up the question. All the other New Testament writers are completely silent about it, except where Jesus calls them the synagogue of Satan. <clears throat> In Romans 9, 10, and 11, Paul talks about the Jews. And <clears throat> He starts out by saying about the great sorrow that he has for them because they are all going to hell. Now, do you interpret that as them being God's chosen people? And let me just read to you a few select verses from Romans 9 uh, and 11. Paul writes, What if God, although willing to demonstrate his wrath, and to make his power known, endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction. Now here Paul is describing the Jews. Now how would you like for the Bible to make reference to you as vessels of wrath prepared for destruction? Would you take that as a flattering statement? This is how Paul is describing the Jews. Vessels of wrath prepared for destruction. And in Romans 9.31, But Israel, pursuing a law of righteousness, did not arrive at that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith, but as though it were by works. In other words, they're missing salvation. Missing the whole message in the gospel. They're missing the whole message in the gospel. And that's what we can read in the Bible about Sanhedrin, uh, that religious uh, rabbis uh, that was uh, active during Jesus' time. They are still active, as I said in the in entrance, uh, the introduction, but under another name. They are uh, rabbis in Talmudic Judaism, which is the equivalent of the uh, uh, Sanhedrin today. And it still denies the truth of the gospel, and they still deny the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Nothing has changed over 2,000 years. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That's all right on. Um, you probably know that in the year 70, uh, the Roman army completely destroyed uh, Jerusalem in a little bit of history here gives you some idea of what uh, the Jews were like back then. Not only did they torment our Lord Jesus and kill him, but they tormented Paul uh, viciously, trying to kill him. They plotted, they even uh, swore an oath that they would not eat until they had killed Paul. Now, these people uh, pride themselves on being so righteous and so, such religious zealous, zealots. And here they are taking an oath 
to not eat until they kill Paul. Um, there was a rebellion in Israel against the Roman occupation that began in the year 66. And one of the Jewish uh, generals was a guy named Joseph. Well, when the rebellion started, uh, Rome sent four legions from Syria, commanded by Vespasian. And when four Roman legions came to quell this rebellion, uh, jo General Joseph said, well, we're done. Uh, four Roman legions. I mean, that's almost the equivalent of the Roman army that conquered all of Gaul. And here they are fighting this little band of Jews. And uh, Joseph said, this is crazy, the way these people behave. These, these Jews are worse than the Romans. They're barbarians. And somewhere during this fruitless battle, General Joseph switched sides. He said, these Jews are so horrible, I want no part of them. And he switched sides. He changed his name to Josephus, and he wrote a splendid history of the Roman Jewish War, which I thoroughly enjoyed reading. And it describes how horrible these people were. And then after Josephus left to become uh, Emperor of Rome and his son Titus took over the army, uh, General Titus was so grossed out by, by the barbaric behavior of the Jews that he ordered that not one stone be left upon another in the destruction of Jerusalem. He was so infuriated by the bloodthirsty barbarism of these Jews, and so they were dispersed throughout the world. The nation of Israel ceased to exist in the year 70. I want to say again and again and again and again, do not be deceived by what the Jews want you to believe, which is that they are God's chosen people that is not in the New Testament. Nowhere. And these are mostly Jews writing this. They are not God's chosen people. The, the promise was made to Abram and to his seed Christ. And this treatise that Paul wrote in Romans 9, 10, and 11 is a condemnation of the Jews for their unbelief. And it's basically a sentence on them of their condemnation to hell for rejecting Christ. And now here we are 2,000 years later, and the Jews that we now cohabitate with are the descendants of those who have rejected our Lord, persecuted our Lord for 2,000 years. And I want us at another time, if uh, if Michael is in agreement for us to talk about the land Israel, uh, which is a, a totally different topic in the Bible uh, about the uh, Holocaust and the reestablishment of Israel. I think this will be a quite long video. I think we need uh, these two, two parts of it because people won't be able to focus on, for so long. All right. And uh, as I would like to stress what Louis said here, that um, the, in, in Romans 11, uh, 26, uh, Paul is saying that all Israel will be saved. And uh, this statement has provoked a variety of interpretations. Uh, the most widely held are as follows. Uh, and, all, and so all, all Israel will be saved. That means that the majority of Jews in the final generation before Christ's return will, uh, be, will turn to Christ for salvation. The rest will go to hell. And Paul is using this term, Israel, for the spiritual na nation of Israel, made up of everyone, Jew and Gentile, who has received 
salvation through faith in Christ. That is Israel, not the land, physical land in Middle East today. It's, okay, it's Israel, of course, it's called Israel, but that's not the biblical Israel. So, all Israel will receive God's promise of salvation. But it's the remnant. Sorry? He's referring to the remnant in verse 5. Yes, yes, you can take over now. Okay. When he talks about all Israel being saved, it's prefaced by Paul's statement that he's talking about a remnant, uh, which can be as small a number as you can imagine. Uh, he says, uh, a remnant, according to God's gracious choice, uh, so only a small portion of the Jews uh, will be saved so that God can fulfill that promise uh, but it is only a remnant that uh, will be saved the lost generation as I said before Christ's return don't be don't be deceived by Zionism <laughs> it's, a, it's a total distraction you have to stay focused on Christ. real Christianity and Christ and your walk with God, and the Zionists want you to get, run down this rabbit trail. They want you to, to call Jesus Yeshua. They want you to uh, go to church on Saturday and say Shalom, Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. They want you to cover your head, contrary to Scripture, um, to say Yahweh instead of God the Father. Uh, this is all an adulteration of New Testament Christianity. Yeah, and um, there have been public burnings of the New Testament in the Zionist state of Israel. And no wonder that that is happening because the truth is really, really hitting hard uh, among those people who are living uh, in a satanic life called Talmudic Judaism, or as they were called in Jesus' time, the Sanhedrin. And they are rabbis uh, who are deceiving <coughs> people. And if it w would have stopped with Jews, that is bad, but they have deceived governments in the whole world to, to think that God is, uh, Jews are God's chosen people. They have, <coughs> the Zionists have. Uh, conducted two world wars, first world war and second world war, it should be called the first Zionist world war and the second Zionist world war, and they are planning to start the third now. So they, it's really a threat to against whole humanity and the true enemy to God we are talking about. And we will make another video following up this video, and uh, we want to thank you for now for listening to us and uh, keep away from the religion and Judaism. Keep your eyes on the faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.